Welcome back to the Eagle tutorial. We're currently on episode 13 and we're going to start looking into creating some trail in the back of our player so we can have that nice feeling um, that he's just gliding around and he's moving through an actual world and uh, these trails are going to help us uh, have some visual cue that he's moving basically. So what we're going to be doing in this episode is we're going to be creating our very first trail. Actually we're going to be creating our very first trail prefab. So for trails, what we're actually doing here is that we're using trail renderer and these things only display if you're moving around. So what we're going to be doing first is we're going to start by creating a menu player object. Um, this might seem a little bit weird, but it's a one line script that is going to make the player move in the menu. So let me just quickly create a new script, call it menu player. And let's open it up. Only keep the update. In this case, we're going to be using the update up keep or rewrite it whatever you like the most so private void update and all we have to do here is transform that position plus equal vector 3 forward times whatever speed let's do 3 in that case times time the delta time so that is our one liner that we're going to be putting on the player so back in the menu scene let's find a player add the menu player script to it now when we press on play as you can tell, it moves forward. Now, what we want to be doing here is we want to start creating our trail object. So what we'll do is we'll actually hit play in the preloader, just start the game normally. And then we're going to wait until we get the player, hit pause. And now we just realized that we need to fix the camera as well. But um, we're not going to be using the camera just yet. Let's actually make our trail first. So click on your player while the game is paused and then we're going to start building that trail. To build that trail, I'll start by creating a new folder called prefab. And inside of prefab, I'll create another folder called trails. So that's where we're going to be holding all the 10 trails we have in the end. Now the fun part begins. So we are going to right click in the R key right here, create a new empty game object and let's call this one one because that's the very first trail we'll have and in here I'll just reset everything put it on zero and then I'll drag and drop it beneath the player as a children then make sure everything is back on zero now we have some weird scaling issue because the player is um, a hundred in scale on the three axis so there is gonna be some tweaking to be done but right here I want to have my trail as clean as possible so everything's on zero the scale is on one and then I'll actually create two other children beneath it. This one is going to be called right and the other one is going to be called left. So create empty object right and then left. Both of these are going to be the trails because we want two of those. We want two trails, one on each side of the plane. We want to be moving this one at 0 0.5 in X. And now you're going to get a really weird behavior where it goes that way and it's just like really far away. And that is because the plane has some weird scaling issue to it, but just uh, keep up with it. We're gonna be fixing it later on. This one is at minus 0 0.5. And now what we're gonna be doing on these is we're going to be adding a trail renderer. Now, if we have a look right here, that's the very first trail renderer. There is quite a lot to do um, on this object. Then let's move over to the left side here and add a trail renderer as well. Now, once this is done, we are going to take our one right here, our new prefab we've created, and drag and drop it inside of the prefab folder for trails. And here it is. Now we can stop the game and actually have a look at the prefab itself. So it looks like a simple object, and then it has two small objects inside of it that are going to leave trails. If we move it around, as you can tell, it does do something. It leaves a trail, basically. Now, what I want to be doing with this is to spawn it while the game is playing because it might not be the one, it might be the third, uh, the fourth, whatever trail we want. So we need to spawn it dynamically. That's the first thing. And also, while we spawn it, we can also adjust it to fit the, the weird dimension and also the weird pivot point of the, this plane. So we are going to head over to our favorite script, you guessed it, that is the menu scene and start coding this. Now we have a really big menu scene, but like I said, it's almost done. It's about 500 lines in the final version. So if we just if we just go at the very top here, we are going to be declaring a um, a private game object actually, a private game object that is going to be the current trail. 
And then we're going to move down to the set trail function, the one we didn't use in the last episode. So, so we have the comment right here that says change the trail on the model. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing right here. But first off, let's check, is there actually a trail uh, going on right now? So say we're actually changing those trails through the shop. Is there one currently active right now? So if current trail is not equal to null, let's go ahead and do a destroy. So destroy current trail. Now um, we are going to create a new one. So obviously create the new trail. And the way we're going to go about this is by saying current trail is equal to instantiate manager instance player trails. Remember we have an array of player trails that is exactly what we'll be using to instantiate. So player trails and we spawn out the index index just like this. Let's also make sure we cast this as a game object. And now we have our trail. It's actually on the player. Well, it's not on the player just yet. We haven't really um, set the parent. So let's do it right here. Set it as a children of the player by doing current trail dot transform set parent. And then let's do a find object of type menu player because that's the only that's the only object in the game that has uh, the menu object component on it. Then once it is a children of the player, we can go ahead and just fix the weird scaling issues and also rotation issues. So right here, I'm going to share with you the code I've wrote to have this work. We change the local position for, of course, vector 3.0. So it's at the center of the player. And then we do current trail transform local rotation. We're changing it for quaternion.euler 0090. And then current trail transform local scale. We put that on vector 3.1 times 0, 0, 001, or you know, just divide that by a hundred. And here we go. So we should actually have um, the trail working properly. The only thing we're missing right here is this, this thing is going to crash because we do not have any trails in that uh, player trail array. So let's go on our manager in the preloader scene and let's go under player trails, have a size 10 array of player trails and let's quickly just drag and drop the same prefab over and over again. Since we only have one trail at the moment, let's just drag and drop it right here for a total of 10 times because we're not going to be um, creating all the trails in this episode. Actually, all the trails are going to be created at the very end of the tutorial. We're just making sure right now that everything works. And at the end, we're going to go ahead and just start creating some content. So that's going to be around episode 23, I believe, if I keep following the schedule. So if we have a look right now, as you can tell, we get a result that is somewhat like this, which is not too bad. Actually, that's exactly what we want. However, um, we need this to look good uh, right now. It doesn't look good. So while the game is playing, I'll just leave this running. And as you can tell, I'm currently following the plane. The way I've did this is I click on my object. So let me click on right in this case, and then hold F for more than I guess one second. And then it's going to be snapping to your object. You can then zoom in using the middle mouse. And here you go. At this point, we're going to go ahead and just start tweaking or trail renderer a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just play with the, the right one or the left one, actually the right one. Zoom in on it again. And what we're going to be doing is make sure we don't cast any shadow. We don't need to cast any shadow. Uh, we don't need to receive any ear. Let's move per object motion. That works. The material right here is not set just yet. So I think we're going to be setting a material for this. Actually, we have to. <laughs> so let's go under material create a new material, call this, uh, I call this one or trail one in this case. Let me put a capital right here. And then let me go back on my actual object. Zoom in again. We're going to be choosing one. So trail one right here. Then we can modify the shader at the very bottom here for something that is going to be um, particle additive. Why not? And that's going to change the object a little bit, give it a color. But what we want to do right here is to open it up, change the texture for something else. So I've created a little object called trails. It is somewhere in here. Let's just find it. 
And here it is, it's called Trail. It's a small object, it is a 1 by 32 texture and it's going to help us get this effect right here. I'm also going to be changing the tint for pure white. All right, so once we have this, we have other settings to play with. Uh, let's actually collapse that one. We can play with the time. I'll be using a time of three, so I can actually see it fade. Um, does it fade? Yeah, it does fade, so as you can tell, it's a little bit smaller. And then if we go back, we can also play with the width. So say after 0 0.5 second, it can disappear completely. It can be something like that, and I like that quite a lot, so I'll be leaving it right here. Now the color for the first one is fine with me. The alignment has to be on local. Really, really important that uh, this goes on local. And then what else do we need? Um, I don't think we need anything else actually. So I guess that's it for a very first trail. It's a really simple one. Now, of course, all the modification we've done on the right one, let's copy. So let's right click, copy, and let's make sure we paste it on the left one as well. So paste component value, and then we end up with something like this. So it is really important that we save everything we've done. Um, of course, make sure that you have your trail renderer settings in your clipboard. So right click again, in case you're not sure, copy component, then you're going to exit. Find your prefab, drop it in the scene anywhere, then open up the right, paste it in here, and also paste it on the left. Oh, doesn't seem to work. Oh, that's, a, that's the transform actually. So paste it on the trail renderer, and then we can hit apply this way, if we actually start the game right now, we should have that nice trail following our object. And as you can tell, it is there. We're only missing the camera thus far, but everything seems to be working fine in this case. So we have our very first trail working properly. The only thing that really is missing uh, right now is the fact that our camera is not, it's not following the player properly. So what we'll be doing is we'll just go inside of the game scene, actually the menu scene, and we'll put the camera beneath the player just like this. This way it is now attached and when the player moves then the uh, the camera also assume the same movement. And let's test it of course one more time to see if everything works fine and I think that's oh that's actually not fine at all. Um, it seems to be messing up with the rotation. Is the scale okay I think? Okay we do have some kind of problem right here with the menu camera. Let's quickly open up the menu camera and fix those issues. Oh, so right here, uh, we're using the rotation when we should be using the local rotation. Same thing goes down there. Let me see if I have any uh, any more mistake like this. Doesn't look like I have any more mistake with the local and the, um, the world rotation. If we head over to the menu scene really quickly, we are going to take those shop waypoints, the shop waypoint and also the level waypoint. Let's take them and put them under the player as well. So now the player contains the main camera, the shop waypoint, and also the level waypoint. Let's give this a final try, and that's actually where we are going to be ending today's episode, guy. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one, I hope you learned something, and if you did, of course, leave me a like on the video, leave a like on any other video if you want. Uh, share this around. Anyway, click on the video on the screen right now, you're going to be heading over to the um, trail preview video in which we're going to be creating a little preview to put in those square down here. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the other one. Cheers.